Mm. So number three is d s d t is equal to p x dot minus h. Okay, now you can integrate this equation to get s. Let me now write uh, the arguments of s in a particular fashion and I will explain why I'm doing so. So x within square bracket, then x prime, then t um, is equal to integral d tau starting from t i to t p dx d tau minus h. Um, x p tau. So uh, we know that s is a function of x, x prime and t, but we have, I have written x within a square bracket too, um, to refer to the fact that I know x, the coordinate transformation between x and the prime variables is basically interpreted, uh, is a coordinate transformation from the point of view of the canonical transformation, but it can be interpreted as the solution to the problem uh, that is a classical equation of motion. And therefore that's a trajectory, that's a trajectory uh, that's with, with, with where x prime and p prime, which, which, uh, which appear, uh, which from the canonical transformation point of view are the new set of uh, phase space variables are basically the initial conditions. Okay, so this is solution x as a function of x prime p prime t with initial condition. So the initial conditions, so note that uh, x prime is not the initial condition of x and p prime is not necessarily the initial condition of p, but they're related to those initial conditions. So initial conditions are uh, x zero, initial condition of x is x zero, um, where, uh, which is given by x of x prime, p prime and ti, and the initial condition of for p is p zero, which is given by p, um, well, I'm not, I'm, uh, we don't need that. Okay, so this is, this is the initial condition. And, um, and therefore we conclude that this quantity um, generates canonical transformation. Uh, this generates um, <coughs> canonical transformation um, uh, that relates initial condition x prime p prime at ti so you basically when you do this when you do this uh, when you do this in time integral uh, there is a boundary condition as we mentioned before that um, um, so um So this um, uh, generates canonical transformation that relates initial condition x prime p prime at t i to x t p t. So let's see. Um, um, so what it means is that what the statement here uh, means is the following. Just like uh, we have specified only the x uh, part of the story, there is a p part of the story. So there's a coordinate transformation that relates p to x prime p prime t. So that's, uh, that's a functional form P of T. This is the functional form X of T, right? And then for the initial, there's an initial condition for P zero as well, which is given by P of X prime P prime at T i. So when you do this integral, 
uh, you need to know the the time uh, the time dependence uh, time dependent function p of tau x of tau so and then and then uh, you have to know the boundary conditions so that so you are integrating here uh, So here you are integrating x of tau um, and p of tau, and using these two functions, you construct this, which you are integrating, but with boundary condition. With boundary condition that x at ti is given by this function x prime p prime at ti which is same as x zero and p at ti is equal to p of x prime p prime and ti which is same as p zero okay and similarly at similarly x at t at this other end x at t and p at t are given by uh, these functions with t i replaced by t okay so that is the that is the story in classical mechanics now the now the step two uh, is uh, step two is um, is um, quantum mechanical analog This is what we have to discuss, um, and in in uh, um, more precisely, quantum mechanical analog of um, the equations that p is equal to del g del x, and p prime is equal to minus del g del x prime. How would one uh, how would one find the quantum mechanical analog of these state two statements? Now, wind quantum mechanics comes with a basic uh, Hilbert space structure. So there is a basic Hilbert space structure in quantum mechanics. So let's write, write this down. Basic Hilbert space structure. Uh, that says that you have uh, the canonical commutation relation, fundamental commutation relation. I'm using hat to indicate operators. And then x hat acting on x is equal to x x and x y is overlap is delta Dirac delta x minus y and the completeness is this. Now, uh, if you have to discuss a canonical transformation. Uh, it says that there exists a transformed uh, variables x prime and p prime, which have uh, which construct a similar structure. Um, so, canonical transformation under canonical transformation, you come to um, the same structure, but x replaced by x prime and p replaced by p prime, and so on. Now, suppose we set x overlap x prime to be e to the power i by h g of x comma x prime. Then given this, let us calculate the, given this, let us calculate the Given this, let us calculate this uh, uh, in our pro uh, this uh, uh, this expectation value. 
So expectation value of the operator P between X and X prime. And uh, the way to do is to in, in, insert an identity operator here. So that is like integral dy x p hat y y x prime. Now, I'm not going to explain uh, the following statement, but mm, this, is, this, follow, this is a definition of a lo local operator in quantum mechanics. You, you can start from this definition and then um, and then work out uh, to see if it is consistent with whatever you know, whatever, whatever else you know about quantum mechanics. So this overlap is given by, so when you say that the position space uh, representation of momentum operator is minus i h bar derivative, um, uh, what you actually mean is that, um, is the expectation value of momentum in position space eigenstate is given by minus i h bar Dirac delta x minus y times del del y. In fact, uh, for any, uh, the position space representation of any local operator where you replace p hat by some other local operator, it will be given by the chronic, uh, the, the Dirac delta delta x minus y times a differential operator, which for momentum is minus i h by delta y. And then you view this part as, uh, as, the, as the wave function uh, of a state uh, given by x prime uh, as a function of y. So this is a function of y on which this derivative is acting. And then you can do an integration by parts and that's a straightforward manipulation and show that um, this result is given by minus i h bar del del x of e to the power i by h bar g x comma x prime. And, uh, and that same thing is given by um, uh, del g del x, del g del x times x. x, x prime overlap. Okay. So this is, a, um, this is the uh, quantum mechanical analog of this relation here. Quantum mechanical analog of this equation, B equals del G del X. Um, you, you achieve that by taking, um, and that follows from the assertion that X, X prime overlap is given by this. Similarly, show similarly show that um, the expectation value uh, of p prime is given by minus del g del x prime x overlap x prime which is the analog of uh, the other equation, p prime equal minus, equals minus del g del x prime, okay? So what it shows is um, that the analog of these two equations can be obtained if we take uh, the overlap between x and x prime to be this. Now, this is just, uh, an, uh, this is a, just an identity um, uh, that follows from this, this expression. It has, this has no, um, this says nothing about the relation between X and X prime. For arbitrary X and X prime, uh, this, if this is valid, then the momenta will be represented in expectation, as expectation values by these two functions. That's the result. Now, uh, when we do, uh, uh, when we, if we use this G, uh, if we use in, instead of G, if we use the action, then that say that Dirac's proposal is that then these X and X prime are related by time evolution um, because action generates 
uh, canonical transformation. So if you take uh, if you take S to be the action, then we know that uh, its arguments X and X prime are such that X is the time evolved version um, of X prime. That's a classical result. Um, and that would be the analog, and this would be the analog um, in quantum mechanics, where you are calculating overlap uh, between the two gates, X and X prime, where X can be interpreted to be the time evolved version of X prime. That was Dirac's uh, intuitive proposal, okay? Yeah, so that, that ends this uh, promised discussion.